Hi, the topic of today's program is another interesting topic called excretion. Let's have an overview of what we are going to learn today. First, we are going to learn about excretion, which is the removal of waste products in animals, plants, as well as in humans. We will learn about human excretion, the excretory organs, and the excretory product. Okay, let's now begin with the definition of human excretion. Excretion helps to maintain a healthy body. When we talk about excretion, it refers to our body's ability to remove waste products which are harmful if it stays in our body. These wastes, such as water, mineral salts, urea, and carbon dioxide, are the result of chemical reactions. The removal of these wastes enables the body to remain healthy and its organs to continue functioning as it should. Human excretion consists of three excretory organs, that is the skin, lungs, and kidneys. The skin, apart from being a sensory organ, is also one of the important excretory organs. From the sweat glands just below the skin, water, mineral salts, and urea, which have been absorbed from the blood capillaries around them are excreted along the sweat duct and passes out through the sweat pores on the skin surface. Sweating helps the body to cool down and regulate body temperature. That's why you can see that during a hot sunny day, you tend to sweat a lot. The water will evaporate but the mineral salts and urea will be left behind on your skin. Have you ever tasted your sweat? I'm sure you have. Ah, do you know why your sweat tastes salty? This is because it contains water, mineral salts, and some urea. The second excretory organs are the lungs. Carbon dioxide in the blood capillaries diffuses into the alveolus and is eliminated from the lungs when we exhale. If carbon dioxide from respiration is allowed to accumulate in our body, it will increase the acidity of the blood and can cause suffocation and poisoning. Therefore, carbon dioxide has to be removed quickly. Whereas, water is eliminated from the lungs in the form of water vapour. The third excretory organ, which is the main organ in our excretory system, are the kidneys. The kidneys remove urea, which is a waste formed in the liver from excess amino acids in the body. The urea is then excreted in urine, which also contains water and traces of mineral salts. And now, Let's look in detail at the human urinary system. Every human being has a pair of kidneys a pair of ureters, a urinary bladder, and a urethra. The urinary system begins with the kidneys, which filter blood to remove waste like urea, water, and mineral salts into urine, which flows in a tube called ureter to the bladder. The kidneys are bean-shaped organs located at the back wall of the abdomen, just below the diaphragm. They are protected by the lower rib cage, 
and roughly the size of a clenched fist. The kidney is coated by a transparent and fairly tough outer membrane called capsule. A longitudinal section of the kidney shows that it can be divided into two parts. One, the outer part of the kidney, which is dark red, is called the cortex. The cortex is one-third the size of the kidney. Two, the medulla is the thicker part of the kidney. It is lighter in color, pale red. The inner boundary of the medulla forms several pyramids which open into a sac-like cavity called the pelvis. The kidneys play a vital role in filtering, cleansing and balancing the body's blood and other fluids. They remove nitrogenous waste products such as urea and uric acid as well as mineral salts and excess water to form urine. Useful substances and most of the water are reabsorbed into the blood circulatory system. The kidney also regulates the water and chemical balance in the body. Depending on the weather, for example, on cold rainy days, the body reabsorbs less water so the kidneys produce more urine. On the other hand, on a hot dry day, more water will be reabsorbed into the blood so the urine produced will be more concentrated. The kidney also controls the salt content and chemical balance in the body by reabsorbing useful mineral salts and most nutrients like glucose and amino acids. segment, we will examine the importance of maintaining healthy kidneys and the problem of kidney failure. From our earlier discussion, we know that the kidneys not only excrete urea, mineral salts and water, but it also excretes many harmful substances that are consumed. Even though the kidneys are considered as relatively strong organs, it may be harmed in several ways. The food we take may contain toxic substances like mercury, lead, arsenic and insecticides that can damage the kidneys. We can maintain healthy kidneys by drinking lots of water and maintaining a healthy diet which is a diet low in salt and sugar. Too much salt and too much sugar is also bad for the kidneys. It can lead to high blood pressure and also diabetes. Under normal circumstances, substances like protein, amino acids and glucose are not found in the urine. If there is glucose in the urine, it is most likely that the person has diabetes. This can lead to kidney failure. We should also avoid drugs and unapproved medicine and food that can damage the kidneys. Kidneys can also be harmed by infections which usually begin in the bladder and then spread to the ureter and kidneys. If one kidney stops functioning, we can still survive, but if both fail, we may die. A lot of toxic waste and water accumulate in the body. This causes severe side effects. The toxic substances in the blood will accumulate and this will lead to death. So those people who have problems with their kidneys need to get treatment by taking medicine or in severe conditions, they have to undergo kidney dialysis treatment. Other than dialysis, 
the only option they have is by undergoing kidney transplant. However, dialysis is a more common treatment due to the fact that it is not easy to find a suitable donor to donate a kidney. The dialysis machine works in similar ways to the real kidneys. It is actually a technique to separate particles of different sizes in a liquid mixture. The patient is connected to the machine via two tubes. One tube is connected to one of the patient's arteries and one to a vein. So the blood flows through the machine and back into their body again. The machine filters up the waste through an artificial membrane. A patient's blood needs to pass through the machine many times to make sure that all wastes are removed. As such, the person normally spends about 5 hours, 2 or 3 times a week on the dialysis machine. This is very taxing on the patient. And this kind of treatment is not cheap. Furthermore, there are high possibilities that the person may later develop anemia and infections through this treatment. Dialysis does not cure kidney failure, but it can only prolong the person's life. The only hope is still a kidney transplant. Remember, prevention is better than cure. Drink lots of water, have a diet that is low in salt and sugar. Besides excretion in humans, Plants also need to excrete their waste products, but they do not have specialized excretory organs. The waste products of plants mainly consist of water, carbon dioxide, oxygen, mineral salts, and nitrogenous waste. These waste products are excreted mainly through the stomata and through the cell walls by simple diffusion. During respiration, oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide and water are the excretory products. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide and water and produces the byproduct oxygen. Water and carbon dioxide produced during respiration are used for photosynthesis. Oxygen produced during photosynthesis diffuses from the leaves into the air. Only a small quantity of oxygen is used for respiration. Water in the plant is largely obtained from the soil. Any excess water is excreted as water vapour through the stomata during transpiration. Excess minerals taken from the soil and which are not used up by the plants are stored in certain parts of the plants. These mineral salts are mainly retained within the plant body as crystals like the calcium carbonate and calcium oxalate crystals. Minerals like silicon salts are deposited in the leaves of the grass family to strengthen the leaf blade. Nitrogenous waste are usually converted into insoluble crystals and harmless granules which are stored in leaves, flowers and fruits which are later lost from the plant when they shed their leaves, flowers or bark. Some other complex waste products of plants include latex, resins and gum. Some wastes are toxic 
or poisonous, while some others are very useful to human beings. For example, latex from the rubber tree stems is useful in producing tires, gloves and shoes, whereas resins play an important role in the paint industry. Most nitrogenous wastes in plants are extremely poisonous but may be extracted to produce medicine and drugs like morphine, opium and cocaine for use in hospitals as anaesthetics. Nicotine from tobacco leaves can also be used as a painkiller and tannins and stains which collect in the bark can be used to make ink. Others, like oil droplet, can be used to make perfumes. Oils excreted in the leaves, petals and fruits can be used for making eucalyptus oil, tea oil, camphor oil, nutmeg oil and cooking oil. Pepper from the berries of pepper plants is used in food flavouring. Turpentine used in paints come from the trunk of pine trees. Quinine, for example, found in the chinchona bark is used to treat malaria. Okay, let's recall what we have learned so far. Number one, excretion is the process of removing toxic substances which are produced during metabolism that occurs in the human body. Number two, excretion is important to maintain a healthy body by the removal of toxic waste. Number three, the human excretory organs are the skin, lungs and kidneys. Number four, the skin excretes water, salts and urea through sweating via the sweat pores. Number five, the lungs excrete carbon dioxide and water vapor during exhalation. Number six, the kidneys excrete water, mineral salts, urea, uric acids and other nitrogenous waste. Number seven, the human urinary system is made up of the kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder and urethra. Number eight, the ureters bring the urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder. Number nine, the urinary bladder stores the urine before it flows out to the urethra. Number 10. The kidneys are found at the back of the abdominal cavity. Number 11. The kidney is bean shaped and the size of a clenched fist. 12. The kidney is made up of two parts, that is, the cortex and the medulla. 13. When both kidneys stop functioning, the patient has to be treated with kidney dialysis or kidney transplant. Number 14. Plants also excrete waste products of water, carbon dioxide and oxygen by simple diffusion through the cell walls and through the stomata. Number 15. Carbon dioxide and water are excretory products released during respiration. Number 16. Oxygen is the excretory product released during photosynthesis of plants. Number 17. Mineral salts are removed mainly through crystal formation in the plant. Number 18. Excretory substances from plants, among others, include latex, tannin, 
resin, gum, quinine, calcium oxalate, stains, plant oils, morphine, cocaine, and nicotine. Number 19. Dangerous plant excretory substances include morphine, cocaine, and nicotine. Number 20. Plant excretory substances are deposited in different parts of the plants, such as in the leaves, flowers, bark, stems, or fruits. Number 21. These nitrogenous wastes are normally removed as complex substances. They are removed when that part of the plant dies and drops off through shedding. Number 22. These complex excretory wastes are also removed when humans harvest them for useful purposes. In summary, excretion maintains a healthy body in humans and animals and it is a part of the cycle of growth in plants.